For this question, we're told a rod of 1025 steel, half a meter long, is heated from 20 degrees Celsius up to 80 degrees Celsius, while its ends are maintained rigid. Determine the type and magnitude of the stress that develops, and you can assume that at 20 degrees Celsius, the rod is stress-free. For part B, we are asked to calculate the stress magnitude if we have a rod of a different initial length, but same other conditions. And for part C, we are asked to calculate the magnitude and type of stress if this time the bar is cooled down from 20 degrees Celsius to negative 10 Celsius. So recapping info, we know the type of material, an initial length, we know a change in temperature, and we know that it's stress-free initially. For part B, we know that it's a new length, and for part C, we're talking about a different change in temperature, cooling down rather than heating up. So let's dive into part A. If we're asked to calculate the type and magnitude of stress, Let's recall that stress equals modulus times strain normally. Modulus of elasticity times the strain that's observed. Well, we can account for strain because we know that thermal expansion is going to cause this rod to extend. Normally, you think of strain as LF minus LI all divided by LI. In this case, we're going to write it in terms of the thermal expansion coefficient. Thermal expansion coefficient times the change in temperature. The one thing to watch for, where it can commonly be a mistake here, is that if you want your uh, stress to come out with the correct sign for tension or compression, we have to take T0 minus TF for our change in temperature. Normally you take final minus initial. Here we have to take initial minus final if we want to get the correct sign convention. Now what we need is we need to know what the thermal expansion and the modulus of elasticity are for 1025 steel. Looking them up in the appendix, we find that a good match for the modulus of elasticity is 207 gigapascals, which is simply 207 times 10 to the third megapascals. Meanwhile, for the thermal expansion coefficient, we find it is 11.7 ppm per degree Celsius, which is simply 11.7 times 10 to the negative sixth per degree Celsius. So let's go ahead and solve for our thermal stress. Since the ends can't expand, but they would like to, we're going to generate a thermal stress equal to 207 times 10 to the third megapascals multiplied by 11.7 times 10 to the negative sixth per degree Celsius this will then be the temperature difference, initial minus final, so it's going to be 20 degrees Celsius minus 80 degrees Celsius. When I plug these into a calculator, I find that the thermal stress which arises is negative 145 megapascals. Since it's negative, we call this compression, which makes sense. The rod, as you heat it up, it wants to expand, but we're not allowing it to by maintaining the ends rigid, so it's going into a state of compression. Now for part B, it asks what would be the stress magnitude if a rod one meter long were used? Well, if we go back here, we didn't actually use the half meter length anywhere. It actually is irrelevant. It doesn't come into it. The reason why is because strain is equal to L final minus L initial divided by the initial length. So the final length of the rod minus the initial divided by the initial length. Sure enough, if we start with a longer rod, then you think this would throw it off. But in fact, the final length also gets thrown off by the same amount. So it doesn't come into play. Therefore, we have the same as part A. Let's move to part C. In part C, now something has changed. We go from 20 down to negative 10. So how will that modify it? Let's write it out as we did before. The thermal stress, which will occur, is going to be equal to 207 times 10 to the third megapascals multiplied by our thermal expansion coefficient, 11.7 times 10 to the negative sixth per degree Celsius. And now again, it's initial minus final. So we're gonna take 20 degrees Celsius and we're gonna minus a negative 10 degrees Celsius which gives us a positive 72.6 megapascals. The fact that it's positive 
tells us that the bar is now under tension.